So uh, the second page of this is going to be a review from algebra. So some of you are pretty good with the algebra stuff. Um, those of you in algebra two, this should be like super easy. So um, we're just going to make sure that we review some algebra along the way because second semester algebra is always, um, you know, things that you're not generally as comfortable with um, as students in geometry. So on this problem, we're going to be doing uh, solving by substitution and also by elimination. So substitution is the one where you decide what variable you want to solve for and then you plug it into the other equation. So for this problem, you could either solve for x on the second equation or y on the first equation. Tell me why it's a bad idea to solve for x here or for y here. Then you get fractions. Yeah, you don't want to put fractions into a problem where they, there were no fractions. Whoops. About that. So if you have the option of solving um, where you have a coefficient of one or negative one, that's what you should do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve for x there. So x is equal to nine minus two y or negative two y plus nine, whichever way you want to write it. Okay, what do I do with that? You plug it into the first equation where x is. Okay, so it goes in up here in place of x. So to solve by substitution, we're replacing x with 9 minus 2y in order to get one, an equation with just one variable. So now again, you could have solved the top one for y and plugged it into the bottom one. It just is personal preference at that point. Okay, so 18 minus 4y minus y equals 8. We have negative 5y, and I'm going to subtract 18, so it would be negative 10. y would be 2. Okay, um, Kylie, tell me what to do with the two. Um, you plug it in into one of the equations to find x. Is there kind of a best choice of where to plug it or does it matter? Um, it, I don't think it matters, but I do the top one. Okay, it really doesn't matter, but this, you've already solved for x, and so it's kind of like a little formula that you already have x by itself. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but usually it's a little simpler to plug it into wherever you, you know, already solved for the variable. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the 9 minus 2y, okay, and that would give us 9 minus 4 would give us 5. Anna, how should I write my answer? Uh, an ordered pair. Okay. So our answer here is going to be 5 comma 2. And um, Lucy Clark, do you remember why you want to write your answer as an ordered pair? I'm not sure. OK, if you graphed, what would these things represent? Um, the intercepts. Like what, what shape is this when you graph that equation? A line. It's a line, right? We're doing linear equations. Yeah, so when you graph uh, those two equations, they're going to represent lines. So you'll have some kind of lines here. What does the 5, 2 represent? Chris, what's the 5, 2 representing? The point. The point where? The point where it's, where it's plotted on the line. Like this point or like this point? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Carson, what does 5T represent? Um, the point at which they intersect. Yes, good. So 5-2 is the point where the two lines intersect because 5, 2 is a point that represents the, like it's a solution to both equations. So if you put 5 in for x and you put 2 in for y in either of those equations, it's going to work, which means the points on both lines is just the point of intersection. So that point right there would be 5, 2, and that's why we write it in, in order pair form because it's representing a point. Okay, now elimination. Um, elimination can be really helpful when you have big numbers or when you have a little bit more complicated equations, but you can also use it with the simpler ones here. So I'm just going to copy over that um, problem, 2x minus y 
equals is eight, right? Equals eight and x minus x plus two nine two y equals nine. Okay, now for elimination, elimination, you're trying to um, make it, you're like rigging it up so that when you add the equations, one of the variables will drop out. So because we already have a negative in front of the y on the first equation and a positive in front of the y on the second equation, we already have opposite signs. I'm going to choose to try to get rid of y. So I just need to figure out what, would I, what will I multiply both sides by? on the top equation if I'm trying to get rid of y? Two. 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 Okay, so if I multiply by two on the top, again, make sure you do it on both sides. A really common mistake is to forget to multiply the right side by, excuse me, by two. Four, oops. Four y, four x, <laughs> four x minus two y equals 16, and then we still have our x plus two y equals nine. Now again, we have made it so that when we add the equations, one of the variables is going to drop out. It doesn't matter which variable you cancel out first, or like when you start the problem, I'm going to do that again because I had a negative and a positive. I already had like the signs opposite like I wanted. Okay, so when you add those, you're going to have 5x equals 25, x equals 5. Not surprising because we already knew the answer. Remember, we just solved the same problem another way. So we know that x is supposed to be 5. And then at this point, it really doesn't matter which equation you plug it into. So when I asked Kylie about where she would put in the y equals two back here, it's simpler if you put the y into the little formula that you kind of already solved for. But on this one, you haven't done that. So it doesn't really matter where you put it, just whatever you think is easier. Most people would probably prefer to use the equation with the plus in it. So five plus two y equals nine, two y equals four, y equals two. And again, we already knew the answer. So that's just verifying that it's the same answer both ways. Okay, sometimes I'll tell you you have to do it one way or another. Sometimes I'll give you the option, but you need to know both methods. And then um, if I give you the option, you decide what you think is easiest. So on those problems, sometimes you don't get an order pair. Sometimes you get a different situation. And so that might be something that you need to go back and, and review. 